you will inevitably not make your goals if you never step into the effort to make those goals. Our grand opening, we blew confetti, we had this massive grand opening, it was fantastic. And then the next day, the next morning, I was there at six o'clock in the morning sweeping confetti and throwing it away. Like, <laughs> that is the reality. Whatever the next right thing is, do that and do it just with tenacity and perseverance. Without Fear of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm your co-host, Andrea Ingstrom, a real estate investor and business coach and co-founder of the Partnership for Realtors. I'm here with my co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the best-selling book, Without Fear of Her Future. Over the past two years, Teresa has had nearly 200,000 join her masterclass where she teaches women how to become successful real estate investors. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Andrea. Well, today we actually have a very dear friend of mine who is our guest. And I know that our listeners are going to love to hear her story. Susie uh, unexpectedly found herself as a single mom. And in that, she also found her life purpose. And so ever since I have known her, she has just had a heart for single mom. So uh, she founded and she's an executive director of Shine. And her mission is to light the way for single moms. Founded in 2019, just four years old, it has seen incredible growth over the past two years, Shine host warrior women um, that support groups and practical resources in partnership with the Women's Real Estate Investors Network. So when in transition, connecting the, with positive women will bring you through hard things into the light of your own potential. So Susie, welcome. So, so excited to have you on as our guest today. Welcome to the Without Fear of Her Future podcast. So tell these ladies a little bit about yourself, where you live. Sure. I live in Tyler, Texas, and I have three boys still at home, 21, 16, 12. And then I have six bonus kids I claim as my own. And I'm an ooey. That's what my two grand boys call me because they couldn't say Susie Q. So they say ooey. And um, <laughs> I have a lot of joy in leading the nonprofit here and just getting to see uh, just getting to see my boys like begin to grow into that stage of life where they're not little bitties, not totally dependent anymore, and really having great relationships and conversations. Super fun season right now. Awesome. Well, Susie, we want to hear more about your story. So what happened in your life that brought you to the understanding of the unique needs that single moms have? Yeah, well, so it was completely unexpected. I lived in this little red brick house um, in Tyler, Texas, and across the street from our house was a church where my husband was on staff. And I had, at that time, I had a little bitty baby, a four-year-old and a nine-year-old. And uh, one day the bottom fell out is what it felt like. And uh, my husband, their dad decided he wanted to move across the state and not be a dad, not be a husband anymore. Mm -hmm. And it left me kind of reeling, like, what do I do with that? It really upended everything. Um, it created a lot of gaps in my life where my identity was wrapped up, whether it was as a ministry wife or, um, you know, really depending on someone else as the primary breadwinner, like all of those things just kind of shifted. And I had to come back to what um, was really, who am I? And mm. what do I do now? And there was a particular incident that's a very long story to unpack. I won't do that today. But it really was this intersection of I think that my healing is so connected to becoming an instrument of healing for other people. Mm. And I found this principle of life that I really hadn't experienced before that as you pour into other people, the supernatural thing happens and you get poured into and healing multiplies. And, you know, we have this tendency to sit in this space of what about my needs? How do I fix me? How do I yes. support my family? And really, if we can just turn that around and actually that's where the name shine came from is if you take a flashlight, name it at yourself, it becomes a small diminished light. But if you turn it around, it illuminates the world around you. And so that was an aha I had that, man, if I start investing in other people, it really does something I can't explain in my own life. And it was such joy and freedom and like just this new day of I have to do this now. This is part of how I thrive is in helping other people do the same. 
Oh, that's beautiful. I love, um, I just heard this, this quote recently, but I'm going to say it again. It, somebody um, was saying, when you he feel helpless, become helpful. Mm -hmm. And that that is the most powerful thing you can do. And I, I love how you, you identified um, in the midst of pain, in the midst of hard things, you identified purpose. And, and it's all about being of service to other people. So how do you believe, um, or what do you believe are the greatest challenges that single moms face in those gaps? And what are those gaps that exist in support? Yeah. Well, the two primary things that single moms across the board in research say are one, financial struggle. But yeah. secondly, and just neck and neck with this, is the mental health struggle of anxiety, depression, overwhelm, aloneness. All of those are so connected to this feeling of this is all on me to make this happen for my life. And I think it's another reason why there's a tendency to go inward because you're trying to find your inner reserves to be enough yeah. to compensate for all the needs around you. Um, and so this just kind of paradigm shift of how do I serve others really upends that and allows you to put the anxiety and depression aside and not become so inwardly focused. But um, those are the two things across the board single moms identify. I will say just experientially over the last couple of years, there's a housing crisis for single moms mm -hmm. that is, it's just staggering. The um, level of inflation with the scarcity of housing is creating this just perfect storm for single moms to find safe, clean, affordable housing. Um, and so that's the challenge that I see that whether, you know, that's all part of that financial struggle too, but I would definitely see that that's rising in, in what I would identify as a top need right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that it really strikes me as I speak with women in the Women's Real Estate Investors Network is the number of women who have at some point in their life been a single mom. And I, I, I'd be curious what the statistics are on that, but I think there's there's a commonality there of women who have gone through hard things, and that is why they are seeking financial freedom for the next chapter of their life. And it's not just a, I hope for it, it's a, I must. Yes. I will never find myself in this situation again. I will always make sure that I have uh, a way to care for my, my children and, and take care of myself. Because, you know, every, not, every, not, not all circumstances are promised forever and ever, and, and we don't know what tomorrow brings. And so making sure that we have no fear of our future is, is why we join this. But the, the number of women in our group that are, are single moms or have been single moms in their, in their life is staggering. Yes, Don't you think, Teresa? Yes, I so agree. So agree. Um, I know that we all go through hard things, but the meaning that we assign it determines our result, our results coming out of it. So I want to hear you talk about how you found clarity from that and how what you did with that meaning. Yeah. So one of the things that we we teach, we go, we have this curriculum called You're a Warrior, and it helps women walk through um, just really finding finding their strength. The, our mission is to help women lead their families with strength, confidence, courage, and wholeness. All of those are so core to how they're going to be able to rise up as a leader in their own family. And um, I do want to speak to something that you said, Andrea, that will tie back into this, and that is. Right now, today, the average in America is over 30% of households are led by single moms. So that wow. is that one snapshot time. So if you think about the cumulative of that, the likelihood of someone facing single motherhood at some point is absolutely staggering. Yeah. And so equipping ourselves before the crisis is the crisis is the wisest thing a woman can do for herself and her family right now. And I mean, single moms become single moms a million different ways. We have single moms that adopt and they've never been married. We have single moms who go through divorce, they go through separation, they go through abandonment, they go through a death. You cannot script your life. And if you've existed for any amount of time, you've learned that like the reality of the unexpected will inevitably intersect and usually redirect what you thought was going to be your experience. Yeah. So preparing yourself for that in advance, um, I just can't say the importance of that enough. But in going back to like what we're teaching women and how they take a circumstance in their life and really frame it for how they can use it instead of become subject to it, yeah. um, I think is part of a strong part of our curriculum. We talk about not choosing the victim role, like you, all of us 
are a victim of something at some time, almost inevitably, whether it's our own choices we become a victim of or the choices of someone else, we're going to fall in a hole at some point. And so you can choose to camp out there or you can choose to reframe it as something that happened to you, but not who you are. And so there's a place of strength from understanding that, okay, I am going to choose to use that as leverage and not as like a limp. I'm not going to make that a part of my identity. I'm just going to put that in a chapter and move on and learn from it. And it gives you such a spectacular perspective and empathy for others who are walking through that same thing, but it doesn't have to define you. And I might've missed part of that question. So no, no that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So you, so you started this nonprofit um, and um, what, what was, what did your life look like when you started it? What, like, what, had you, was your life all perfect? And so you said, now that I'm perfect, I'm going to help other people become perfect. But no, tell us what your life looked like when you, when you decided to start this. That's a great, that's a great way to say it. And I would say, you know, obviously nobody wait for that. It's never going to happen. But um, <laughs> I, um, when I started it, I was working as the development and, and marketing director for a national women's organization. And I had gone through a local leadership cohort and my heart just broke for our city. Like mm. instead of doing things, I was I was launching and growing leadership and groups in other cities for other things that were really good work. But I thought, what am, what is happening here? Like, I have to come home and do this here first. And so um, really went through a process of like, do I really quit a job to do this? It's a good job. Do I really leave this job to do this? And um, it really took what I believe is a surrender. Like I believe God had called me to this work. I believe that I could not um, ignore the call and not live with regret. Mm. I had to do it. And so um, I left that job and went, full-time volunteer, more than a full-time hour job into this space and watched incredible things happen in that space of just saying yes. I had a mentor tell me like uh, one time I was talking to him and he said, I said, I don't have the whole plan. Like, I don't understand how I'm going to get there. And he said, all you have to do is get to the corner. Just go as far as you know to go and the perspective will open up in front of you and you'll know where the next corner is. And that has been the most brilliant um just thing to go back to over and over again. Okay, I see that coming and I don't know how I'm gonna get there, but I know how to get this far. And so, um, yeah, that's that's yes. how it's unfolded. And it's definitely not been from a place of perfection and it's actually been from continual brokenness to just go, <laughs> okay, it's still worth doing. Yes, our, our mess becomes our message, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the really specific ways that your organization fills the gaps for women who are in a challenging chapter of their life? Yeah. So Warrior Women is the primary way that we serve women. And the unique thing about Warrior Women is it's a stand with you and stay with you community. And so there are lots of really good, robust organizations that help intersect with specific needs, light bills, rent, food, all those things. But really, we believe that it, without a community around you, you can't get to a place of wholeness to be able to address those things with dignity in your own space, in your own life. And so Really, their first intersection is coming into a support group. And then we do help backfill those needs as they come up. But it can be from a place of a leader helping her walk out. What are your next needs? And how do you look at this holistically? Like if we're helping you with a car payment this month, what's the long range plan for how someone's not having to step into that gap and helping her think through what's in your hands? What can you do? What are your options? What's your long range plan five years from now? And um, gives her a bigger picture and also roots her with community that loves her and becomes a second family. It's so much of an alone season that this is really the number one way that we address the mental health issue is you have people. And oftentimes the resources women find in our communities is not external and it's not financial. It is, the, the, they get me. I'm seen, I belong, yeah. I know that they're going to be there for me. And they resource each other. They also, I mean, there's so many groups that actually they go and do service projects because healing others is part of the healing is yeah. one of our principles. And so that's the first and most broad way that we serve. And Warrior Women started in East Texas, but it's accessible to anyone in the United States can choose. I want to be a warrior in my own community. I want to start this group and we will give them leadership development give them tools, curriculum to be able to do that. And you can host it anywhere. You can host it online if you choose to do that. And that is where the Women's Real Estate Investors Network has intersected with us so strongly. And I, I have to tell you the story because it's just, it was such a revelation of like, 
provision and how God was like, yes, keep going uh -huh. was, um, you know, Teresa and I have been friends for this for, from before this. And um, on March 31st of 21, I walked away from my full time job and I was going the next day, April the 1st, to drive to Dallas because the Women's Real Estate Investors Network had said, yes, we want to partner with you. And they were going to present the first check. And um, I drove over and I don't even remember, I don't even remember, Teresa, what we originally had talked about the sponsorship being, I think it was like 18,000, which was incredibly a huge blessing. I drove over there and they had a hundred thousand oh. dollar check to say, we are truly with you. And that was the day after I put my house on the market to sell so that I was able to chase this dream and I had quit my job. So the incredible affirmation God gave the day after the jump had been made was overwhelming. So I don't, I had to throw that in there, but I don't know. That's so. No, that's, that is so beautiful. And I'm, it makes us so proud to be a part of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network to have a leader like Teresa, who, and I won't, I can't even tell you, um, Teresa and Susie, how many women that I talk to that are, are interviewing to join our mentorship. And I say, tell me what you've seen that tells you you're in the right place. And they say, when I heard about warrior women, and that that's the kind of of um, cause that this group aligns with, I knew I was in the right place because that's that's so my heart, and I know that they understand who I am and what, and that I will al I'm aligning with with what they are all about, and so it's just been it's just been awesome to see how that is inspiring others to say yes, I want to be a part of something like that. I want to see what I can do to help, and I'm so so proud to align with with an organization that does does things like that to to help organizations like yours. Andrea, I just have to tell the backstory. I feel like I just, yeah. we can't not tell that story. Um, as as I had found success as a real estate investor, and then as we were, you know, starting the women's women's real estate investors network, I just knew that I wanted to be a part of something bigger and have something. So I was really searching. Even my team were searching for a place that we were going to give to and really sew into something that mattered. Mm -hmm. And so I would be looking and, hey, there's a million good causes to give to. That's right. the truth. But as I, I, I would look at one thing after another and nothing just like leapt in my heart. I'm mean, like, I love that. That's a great cause. But is that really the thing that I want to get behind? And so uh, space had went by for like almost a year and I felt a lot of guilt because I was like, I need to be sewing into something. This is not right that I, you know, and so I will just never forget. I was driving on the tollway here in Dallas, Texas. I was coming into my office and I prayed this prayer out loud. I said, God, I know that there is someone out there that has a heart to start something. They have the abilities, they have the gifts, they have everything that they have to do something that you've called them to, except they don't have the finances. Mm -hmm. And I have the finances and I wanted a percentage of all of the mentorship to go into something powerful. And so I said, so God, just lead it, lead, lead us to, you know, to each other. So I prayed that prayer out loud in my car, went to work. And it was probably a day or two later Susie just calls me as a friend and we're just chatting, catching up. Uh -huh. And at the end of the conversation, she says, hey, I really want you, uh, you know, to pray for me. I, I really feel called to walk away from my job and start this thing. And um, I knew her heart had always been for single moms. And so she starts describing to me what it is, what her vision is. And my heart just started pounding. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is the thing. This mm -hmm. is the thing. But I didn't even tell her that at the time. I just said, well, would you be willing to say all of that again, like in a video or on audio or something? And so she did. She created a video and she sent it to me. And then I presented it to my uh, team. And I remember sitting in the boardroom, there was not a dry eye in the place. And <laughs> everybody was like, yes, this is it. This is it. And so we called her back and said, OK, well, we're going to support you. And, you know, she like and, and so the rest is history and God is just doing amazing things 
through warrior women and through Susie. But you know what it took is her first step of obedience. And then God connected us together. And that's, you know, God will always come through like that if we will just take those steps of obedience. Mm, I love that. You know, I I love also, Susie, that you didn't have it all. You didn't have all the answers. You didn't have a clear, we're going to start here and in 10 years from now, this is what's going to happen. And we're, and here's how we're going to do it. Um, but this is what I, this is what I share with our investors all the time is even before you have total clarity of exactly how you're going to do everything, start telling people what your vision is. Mm -hmm. Start sharing with people because when, you know, and, and in this and scripture says this is that make clear the vision so that people can take it and run with it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have some level of clarity about what you are called to, and then are willing to be brave enough to say it out loud and share it with others, there is no limit to what can happen if you are just faithful to step out and just even be brave enough to say it out loud. There are so many people with a dream in their heart or even a purpose that, that has been, you know, laid before them and they're, and they haven't been brave enough to even say it out loud because they think they have to have it all figured out yeah. first. Is it, and so good, yeah. good job in sharing, <laughs> good job and in, in just get, stepping out on faith and even just sharing what, what was in your heart. Absolutely. You know, there's a book called Just Enough Light for the Next Step. Mm -hmm. Just Enough Light for the Next Step. And sometimes that's all we have yep. is all we can see is the next step. And I mean, I think that goes with what we're talking about today. It also goes with real estate investing. Sometimes we want to know how it's going to end up and what am I going to do with this property? And, you know, for us, Andrea, Susie, I'm just teaching, get it under contract. That's all, <laughs> you know, that's just the first step. You have enough light to do that. Then you can figure out the next step and then the next step and the next step that if we will just always take the next step that we know um, it unravels in front of us. Absolutely. Um, so, so Susie, I, I want to call back to you, something you mentioned earlier about um, getting them connect, getting women connected with other women when they're going through hard things. Mm -hmm. um, we are not meant to do life alone, um, whether we're entrepreneurs or we're, we're trying to be a mom. Um, and, and so tell me about um, the importance of personal connections and how do you all facilitate those um, specifically? Like how do you help get people together to make connection? Sure. So it starts with two leaders. We don't want any leader doing this on her own because oh, I love that. you're not like a lone ranger, you need a partner. And so it's two leaders together and we try to aim for about five women paired with two leaders so that it's small it's not intimidating. It's it's a close enough circle that you're able to dive deep and have really strong relationships, but that you have multiple different kinds of connections that can happen. Um, and the, it, I think we've gotten so far away from the culture of real community yeah. and our, our relationships have shrunk to this really shallow interaction without real transparency, without real vulnerability, without being able to ask for help. That's one of the things that our moms say over and over again. It was so hard to show up in the group because it meant I was asking for help. And that's almost stigmatized. Like, yeah. you know, um, and so it, the, it, I love what the Women's Real Estate Investors Network is because there's so much of the synergy of partnership and there's no scarcity, there's abundance mentality, there's let's do this together. And that's really part of our foundational culture too, is that really everybody's more powerful in community, no territorialness, no like, you know, just get rid of the seventh grade drama and let's grow up and be women and like relate in deep, meaningful friendships where you can feel safe. You know, it's not going to go outside of that space. And um, so really helping women believe that that's possible, because sometimes we've been so burnt by so many relationships in our past. It's hard to believe that there really is a space like that. Um, and then once it's there, though, those connections just draw them in over and over again. It feeds itself. It's incredible to watch it happen. That's amazing. Um, so tell me, um, I know there are so many women that are listening to this that are like, me too, I'm a single mom. And that's why I'm trying to change my life. Um, so what advice would you give someone who had a picture of what their life would be, and then they find themselves in this situation of being a single mom? Yeah. Well, from my own personal experience, I would say the first stop is prayer. Like, I cannot 
give any credit to my own experience or my own pulling myself up, like none of that, none of that. It was my identity and who God created me to be. And I remember the first thing that I cried out for was my boys. And I was just devastated. What will they think of me? What will they think of God? What will they think of, you know, faith in general? Like how will they be able to recover without the stigma of being a child of divorce? Like all those things were all at once coming through my head. How are we not going to be broke? Like that was really one yeah. of those questions too. Yeah. And I was just crying out in prayer of that almost immediately. That was my first like grief, grief that I faced. And God took me directly to Isaiah 54. And I mean, that's such a random, I don't even know how I got there. Like I don't usually land in Isaiah. And the scripture that popped out to me was Isaiah 54, I believe it's verse 10. And it says, all your sons, which I had all boys will be raised by the Lord and great will be your children's peace. I wrote that everywhere. Like it was on my dashboard, my mirror and like this isn't on my shoulders. When my with my identity firmly secure and who created me, I don't have to count on me to make all this happen. I can go back over and over again to prayer and to a faithful father and I can trust him to bless my going forward and the best that I can do will be enough. And so that was first of all the place that I centered when that big redirect happened happened, but then there you can't undervalue the significance of a mentor who mm -hmm. has gone ahead of you. And so that's one of the key things that our groups offer is at least one of those two leaders has experienced single motherhood before and can identify with the struggle. And she may not be on the, you know, like she might not be that far ahead, but she has gotten through the crisis of it. And she is able to lead her family with all those things, courage, confidence, strength, and wholeness. And that means she's able to pour into someone who's a little bit farther behind her and pull her forward. So prayer, mentorship, community. I went to a counselor for a while and he finally told me, you don't need me anymore. You need a bunch of girlfriends, which was another reason that I realized <laughs> community was the place that it was at. And counseling is unaffordable for the vast majority of single moms. Like it's a great idea. It's not a reality. Although in Warrior Women, we do offer that as one of the parts of it. If you're without a group, then you really struggle to find both the time and the finances to be able to do that and support groups that understand you and can give you a mentor and walk with you are really almost as good as having a one-on-one -on -one counselor to sit in a session with you. They're able to share some of that load. But in general, you know, as I said earlier, everybody ends up with something that redirects them. And so still finding your identity and not believing the lie that you have to do it. You have to figure it out on your own. We have an American mentality sometimes of like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You can do this. And that really is a harsh way to do life. If you yeah. become insulated and siloed, it makes it worse than if you're willing to open yourself up to the strength that other people can can lend you, no matter what it is that's happened to take you off guard. Mm -hmm. So, um, Susie, you've done some awesome things. Um, tell me, tell us what you're most excited about um, that's coming next, and and tell us about your goals for the future. Yeah, well, uh, it's exciting to watch things happen that once you get to the corner, you find that there's new opportunities that you're stunned by that you never could have seen coming. And one of those right now, it's called the Warrior Up Challenge, which is part of what we're doing with warrior women, but women who are like, what is my purpose? How do I identify it? How do I walk with confidence in it? Sometimes women feel like they almost need permission to walk fully into who they are. And yeah. so every couple of months, we're doing a warrior up challenge where women, whether they're a single mom or whether they're a stay at home mom or whether they have just sent kids to college and they're like, OK, what do I do now? Can come into this challenge, do five days together. Teresa helped us do the first one we just launched in September. We're about to do that. I mean, in August, we're about <laughs> to do that in October again. And it is such a sweet um, just this blooming when people really or women specifically really begin to realize, man, there's so much, there's always so much more for me, for my life, for my flourishing, if I'll just be confident enough to go explore it and take the adventure of, of what's next. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and then we're also, our dream has been to build or have a community on a property with so many things that can help a mom who is financially struggling get a way forward long term. And so we are in the process of securing a property that will house about 25 families. And we're just blown away by that. And it's so fun to watch, watch all of that come together in surprising ways. And so I'd say those are probably pretty high on the list right now. 
Amazing. That's so exciting. Um, and, and, you know, it's also amazing to me the number of women in our network that I talk to who have some kind of a passion or a dream to do something that, like what you're doing. And if we've learned one thing, it's that we are we are better together. We can go farther if we if we partner up. So how can women join you and support what you are doing and say, that's that is exactly my purpose and I want to align and we could do this even farther and better if we do it together. How can they help you on this journey? That's a great question. So I would tell them, first of all, go to shinelightheway.com and they'll find the Warrior Women tab on there and you can fill out the form and let us know kind of what your interest is. If you are interested in Warrior Women specifically, that would be the avenue. If you're interested in something, you know, like starting housing in your own neighborhood or starting your own nonprofit, I'm totally open through Warrior Up to be able to be a sounding board for starting nonprofits. How do you do that? And it's all part of the same organization. So when you're part of Warrior Up, you're still supporting Warrior Women 100%. And so um, I've definitely, man, there's plenty of room for all of us to be doing whatever it is God's called you to do. So I'm happy to walk alongside and give some, give some guidance on how to do that in your own way if you choose to. All right. And how can people give to your cause? Uh, go to shinelightheway.com and it says give today, today in the top right and click on that and it'll walk you through it. Amazing. Well, Susie, we always like to ask our guests for three takeaways. So in the, in this situation, what are three things you would advise someone who is just looking to be brave and grow or is perhaps feeling stuck where they are? So I would definitely go back to just prayer first, like that prayer and surrender of, okay, I know that I was created for a purpose and I'm open to allowing God to do what he chooses to do through me. That would be the first stop. Um, not focusing too much on the outcomes. Like you, you can't, you cannot dictate outcomes. You can only measure your input. You can only do what you can do. And if you're doing nothing, you will get nowhere, but <laughs> something will create movement on the other end. And you will inevitably not make your goals if you never step into the effort to make those goals. So measure the things that you control and do them faithfully whatever the next right thing is, do that and do it just with tenacity and perseverance. And it takes a million times. I remember the day that we, our grand opening, we blew confetti. We had this massive grand opening. It was fantastic. And then the next day, the next morning, I was there at six o'clock in the morning, sweeping confetti and throwing it away. Like <laughs> that is the reality of what it looks like yeah. to accomplish anything in life is to just do the next right thing and not hyper focus on is it going to fail? Is it going to fail? Is it going to fail? Because if you focus on that, it will fail. Like just keep taking the next right step forward um, and then get people like trust people to lead you who are farther along. Ask for that help. Um, I have been so stunned by people's just. Just openness and bigness to not be too big or too reserved or too removed to have a conversation with me when I was stuck in something. Yeah. And the who have been the doors almost universally to what has happened. It has not been about a great strategy or plan or it's it's starting with the people first and the people who will become your partners, whether that's just in wisdom and clarity and guidance or it's financial. Like it's all about the people that you trust enough to be in relationship with and who you gain credibility through because you do what you say you're going to do in that continuing to persevere. Uh -huh. I love it. Susie, first of all, I just want to say thank you for being here. I know you're an inspiration to so many um, women who have a heart to find their purpose. And that is something that you do so well is inspire women to step out in faith, to find their purpose and know that God is going to meet you there. And, you know, he, he you start it and he'll finish it so. every time. Awesome. Well, Susie, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I know that you've blessed a lot of people in not only in your in your vision and your ministry and what you're doing, um, but also just how you've inspired people today and our listeners. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, um, everybody who's listening, thank you so much for being our listeners. We want to encourage you to subscribe to the podcast, share it with your friends, help us spread the word about what Susie's doing with her organization, Shine and Warrior Women. 
And um, on behalf of Teresa Todd and the Women's Real Estate Investors Network, we want to encourage you to be brave and dream big. <laughs>